thanks a lot for the invitation and uh, thank you for, for coming. Uh, how much time do I have? Like 60 minutes, something like that. All right, awesome. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna be talk talking about. Um, there's apparently at least one group of people doing or well, trying to do kind of s similar thing. Uh, there's uh, Rémi Leclerc and uh, Margarita Sandon who are in, in, in the process of defining something similar using uh, Margarita's theory. Um, so I, I don't know how, how advanced they are, but so, okay, just so you know. Uh, yeah, so this, this is very much in progress, mostly the technical details, I mean the, the, the scheme of things is pretty much, pretty much clear, but um, the technical details are, yeah, are still in progress. Um, okay, so let's get cracking. So the setting, so it's, it's not for all contact amorphisms or all manifolds, I have a, a specific class. So, so my setting is um, pre-quantization bundles over positively monotone symplectic manifolds. Okay, so I take, let's say, closed positively monotone, and uh, the minimal churn is at least two, so think uh, CPN. Okay, and take the a prequantization bundle over it. So this is, let's say, this is dimension two n. So this is dimension two n plus one, um, and alpha is a one form in V, satisfying. The alpha is uh, the pullback of omega, and uh, alpha is S1. And, oh yeah, so this is this is a principal S1 bundle, and alpha is S1 invariant. Okay, so this uh, this form is a, is a contact form then. Okay, and uh, therefore it makes V into a contact manifold. So that's the that's the class of contact manifolds that I'm going to be I'm going to be working with. Okay, so we get V. C, which is the kernel of alpha. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm I'm interested in the in the in the contact group, in the more precisely in the group of co contact isotopes um, of V. Okay, so. Let's see. So we have naturally a contact group. So this is should should I should I define this? Or is it like pretty much clear? I, I don't know. Okay. No. Okay. Fine. Um, yeah. So so that that's the that's, that's the full group of uh, TFOs preserving C. Inside it, we have the identity component. The, the group I'm actually interested in is the universal cover of this one. Okay, so I'm, I have the universal cover. This group. Okay. So there's a way there's a way of thinking about these groups in terms of contact Hamiltonians. Okay, so since we're in this nice geometric setting, so alpha is kind of alpha is a very nice form. Um, we can talk about contact Hamiltonians and whatever they, they generate. So I'll just remind you. So a uh, contact Hamiltonian is just a time-dependent function, smooth function in V. So this is contact Hamiltonian. OK. And uh, to such a function and for the, for the fixed form, I can associate the corresponding contact vector field xth, so this is a contact vector field. And uh, this is the unique vector, the unique contact vector field satisfying um, this. Okay. 
it also satisfies that if you plug it into d alpha, you get minus dht plus dht r alpha times alpha, where this is the rib field. OK, but if you, if you require contact and this, then it's uniquely defined. OK, and uh, the fact is that, oh yeah, sorry. Um, so given, given this, this vector field, I can integrate it into the corresponding contact isotopy. So this is just generated by the vector field. And starting at the identity. OK, and um, I call phi h the time one map. OK, so this group is just given by all such maps, contact Hamiltonian. OK, and the universal cover is given by taking the classes of these, of these things. phi h tilde, where phi h tilde is the class of this path. In in this group. All right. <clears throat> okay. So that's the group. Now what we do is we construct some kind of invariant of this manifold, of this contact manifold, um, which is a floor, floor type homology. Okay, so we construct so this is a unital associative. Say Frobenius algebra which 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 we just call the floor homology of V. That's so V C but now I'll I'll omit C. Um, yeah over Z two for now. Okay. So that's the floor homology of this contact manifold. Um, and uh, toward the end of the of the talk, I'll I'll tell you what it is and how how to construct it precisely. Uh, for now, um, what you should know. So this is a it's called a proposition. So this this follows from a from a more general, more more interesting result, which I'll state later. Which has to do with some kind of Kizin sequence. Um, so sometimes this thing will vanish. Okay. And it vanishes if and only if the Euler class of this prequantization bundle, so that's a second cohomology class, and you take the Hungary dual and you put it into the corresponding quantum homology of M of the base. Um, so this vanishes if and only if this thing is invertible with respect to the quantum product. Quantum product. OK. So let's take two examples. Three examples. So, first example. Let's let's consider the Hopf vibration. Okay. So here, this this class is 
given by the hyperplane class. Okay, just uh, the generator of the corresponding homology, and uh, it's invertible. Okay, therefore, floor homology of the sphere, the floor homology that they would construct vanishes. Okay, so jumping ahead a little bit, this has to do with the fact that the sphere is not orderable. So non vanishing floor homology implies orderability. We know the sphere is not orderable, therefore, there's no choice but to get zero. And you'll, you'll see in a moment. Okay, on the other hand, let's take the projective space. Uh, oh, yeah, and uh, sorry, I should. I should have said. So, so we're working over Z2. And therefore, this, this thing is uh, also over Z2. OK, so the quantumology over Z2. Um, and invertibility in, in this sense. OK, so here, the Euler class is twice this one. But since we're over Z2, it's 0. Therefore, it's not invertible. And therefore, floor homology does not vanish. And this also has to do with uh, with the fact it's known for 15 years that this this guy is orderable, in fact. And we will see we'll see more applications of this. Um, okay, so maybe maybe a third example, which sort of. Um, so it's it's tempting to to say okay so both both these are prequantization bundles, and what's the difference? Well, here the well one one possible difference is that here the the fiber yeah the the fiber is contractible, and here it's not it generates the the fundamental group, so maybe that's that's the the difference yeah. And uh, this is this what actually this this is what um, Margarita at some point she conjectured. Um, this, however, is not true. I mean that this has to do uh, with orderability or um, non-vanishing of, of this homology theory. So we can consider the largest prequantization space over CP1 times CP1. So here the the Euler class. So the Poincaré dual of the Euler class is given by 1, 1, the second homology. Yeah, so, so it's this times point plus point times this. Um, this is not invertible. This is not invertible in quantum homology. And on the other hand, this is simply connected. In fact, it's diffeomorphic to S2 times S3. And actually, it's contactomorphic to the co-sphere co bundle over S3. Um, so therefore, the floor homology doesn't vanish. And, um, uh, and then this, this thing is orderable, even, even though it's simply connected. So it's not that. Wow. Uh, OK, so before I. Before I say something about the spectral invariance, let me define something. Okay, so definition. So let phi be a contactomorphism. Um, I go back to the to the general v. Um, Okay, actually, maybe maybe I'll just define a bunch of bunch of things. So a point x in V is a translated point of phi if two things happen. 
Um, so translate translate a point that's per contact form. Okay, so maybe it's an alpha translated point of phi. You can do you, you I mean you, you can put any contact form here. However, the, the this, this notion will will depend on the contact form. Yeah, so maybe it's called it's beta contact form. Uh, beta translate point uh, of phi if um, there is a positive time s such that phi of x equals the rev flow of beta applied to x and Uh, this preserves the it, it preserves the contact form at this point. Okay, so think so you have this rib flow of this form beta now point x. So that's phi. That's what it does, and both point both points lie in the same orbit. Okay, and you have this condition of uh, preservation of the contact form, of preserving the contact form. All right. Um, so this point is called uh, is called a discriminant point if it's a translated point. And it's fixed. So, so, so sorry. Not yeah, not not yeah. It's true, not necessarily. Um, okay. okay. Let's let's do that. No, it's then, then it, it, it would have to it, it would have to be fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, a discriminant point is just a translate point which is fixed. Okay. And uh, yeah, so so the it's it's a, it's a fixed point at which this thing preserves the contact form. The, okay. So that's a discriminant point. Um, okay. And what what I'll what I'll need. For the formulation of the the main theorem is the translated spectrum, so that's the third thing. So, given a contact Hamiltonian H maybe okay, so define. So I will call this the, the, the spectrum of H or, or the translated spectrum of H. So that's the set of all. So here, I, I don't think I want to I want to put, um, no, OK. Let me think about this for a second. Um, so I actually want to include all the. Include the backward, um, the backward orbits as well. Um, okay, so so this this is going to be per perform alpha, and uh, if you have a okay, so this this form has periodic rib flow. So if you have if you have something going in positive directions, the same thing is going in, in the negative direction, and all. Okay, so um, so this is going to be the the set of all integrals uh, of this form, where gamma I do want to include the negative ones. Um, 
Sorry? If you write best in R, it's going to be OK. Because in general, best can be OK. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do that, actually. <coughs> such that uh, there is x in v, phi x equals phi s r alpha x, and phi h, and phi h star alpha alpha at x. So abusing notation slightly, I'll just call this the, the, the translated spectrum, even though translate points are only, only in the positive direction. But I want to include all of them because this this, this 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 is what comes up in the in the Fleury theory okay, as as the spectrum. All right, um, and of course this this only depends on the time one map. Okay, so the translate spectrum is defined for any any co contact morphism actually, but I'll I'll use these uh, interchangeably. Um, note that this thing. Okay, so. Let's denote uh, by h bar the integral of alpha over fiber of pi, and just the rib length of a, of a single fiber. And then this thing is h bar periodic, because the rib flow is h bar periodic. OK, so I can formulate the main thing now. Theorem. Um, it's the following. So there's a function. L. It's a function of two variables. Uh, homology class, floor homology class. And uh, contact morphism and gives back a real number or minus infinity such that and there's a bunch of properties okay so this is not a comprehensive list it's just to to give you um, a feeling okay okay so this thing is real unless the class is 0. That's the only thing that gets minus infinity. You could also write h of star minus 0 and then go into r. Um, this is monotone. So if I have two contact Hamiltonians, one of, one of which is bigger than the other. Then the corresponding spectral invariants behave uh, in a monotone way. There's a triangle inequality. So if I take two classes, take their product, um, So you see, you see what I did here, yeah. So this this is defined on the on the contact group, and obviously also defined for for Hamiltonians. Just take the corresponding class. Okay. Um, so this function also respects the product. Um, so I said it's a. Uh, it's a Frobenius algebra, 
Okay, so there's a, there's a non-degenerate pairing. And we have the corresponding notion of uh, Poincare radiality. So if you want to compute the invariant of the, of the inverse a certain con contact amorphism, we can do it using the following formula. And the condition is that this, this pairing uh, is not 0 for these classes. Okay, so that's a, that's a form of duality. Okay. One more thing, which I personally really like. Um, so, um, so I have this frequentization bundle. <coughs> and what you can do is you can take regular Hamiltonians on M, lift them up to, to V. Okay, and that gives you a uh, morphism. Let's call it iota from the universal cover of the Hamiltonian group of M omega to the contact group just by taking normalized, um, normalized Hamiltonians here. Okay, and lifting them up, taking the corresponding element in here. Um, and uh, this this spectral invariant um, knows about this in the following way. So the spectral invariant, um, yeah. So I, I said it's a, it's a unit L algebra, yeah? So the, the unit is given by something that could be called the fundamental class of, of V. OK, so if I compute the spectral invariant with respect to the fundamental class of some um, of, of, of the lift of some element in the Hamiltonian group. This is bounded above by the Hamiltonian spectral invariant relative to the fundamental class of M. So this is O spectral invariant. OK, so he defined this in the monotone case uh, following Schwarz and uh, Vitelbo. Um, What else? Oh yeah, so um, I forgot to say the main thing. So the title is spectral invariance. So this thing is spectral. So, so this thing belongs. So you, you, you take the, the, the element in the universal cover, project, just, just consider the time on map, project it to, to con zero without tilde. And this thing is going to live in the it's, uh, translated, uh, in, in, in the translated spectrum of this thing. OK, now, uh, so let's denote by L plus the spectral variant with respect to the, f to the fundamental class. That's, in some sense, the most interesting one. So then. You can compute it on the rep flow. Um, so if you take a number, real number C, and take the time on map of the rep flow multiplied by you get C. So in particular, for, for the identity, this is 0. So we can, we can compute this. Um, OK, and I'll also mention one curious property of this thing. Uh, this, it, it, it's continuous with respect to the contact Hamiltonian. So C0 continuous. But with a, so it's, it's continuous in a weird way. OK. <coughs> so. You take two Hamiltonians, H and H prime, then the difference between two spectral variants, um, the same class, is bounded above 
by the following. So you take the C0 norm of their difference, and in the denominator, you get the minimum of, uh, of a certain function gh. So gh is the conformal factor. Of, of the flow of h defined as follows. Take the t time flow of h, pull back the form. And of course, since it preserves the context structure, it will give you a positive multiple of the form. And that's the multiple. OK, and then here you take minimum over v times 0, 1. Um, so I, sh I should say, in the, in, the, in the case of Hamiltonian spectrum variance, uh, so the corresponding statement would be the same, but with nothing in the denominator. In particular, you can define Hamiltonian spectrum variance for just C0 Hamiltonians, okay? so for continuous. And here, here you can't, because if you want to take H continuous and approximate it by smooth things, this thing is going to blow up in general. Okay, so you can't. Uh, you, you can do, you can do it for for C one, something like that. Um, but yeah, in general, in general, you you can't. So this is only well defined for smooth Hamiltonians. Okay. I've, I have no idea, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, maybe, maybe it's not sharp with this constant. But uh, if, if, you, if you take, uh, if you take like a, a sequence of these, of these functions, h, uh, with, with the conformal factor blowing up, and a sequence of another sequence of Hamiltonians a, h prime, which converges uh, c zero to it. Pretty sure that this this difference uh, in general is gonna is gonna blow up. Um, I I haven't I haven't thought of a, of an example. properties yeah. okay so uh, this is easy this is trivial this is easy um, I get I guess I guess the uh, algebraically this uh, this this one is uh, um, oh oh yeah this 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 one <laughs> yeah because you have to okay so you have to do Moore's bot floor homology to to do this. And that's uh, I mean it's just just technically un unpleasant, um, but yeah, the rest are. Uh, so I mean, I mean c compared to compared to the to to the standard things you do in spectral variance, that's sort of that that requires the the most the most work. Okay. Inverse. I know. I just for me um, this this inequality just allows you to to define spectral. So okay, you you start with defining this for um, for Hamiltonians with non-degenerate translated points, whatever that means, and then you want to extend it to all smooth Hamiltonians, right? And that's that's the way. You do it. Of course, if h is smooth, then you can approximate it. Yeah. So if, if h is smooth, then this gh is bounded away from zero, um, and you can you can define it just you know, by by passing to the limit. That's that's the purpose of this inequality. Okay. So let's talk applications, as promised. Okay. We have the fo the following corollary. Too dark. So, um, uh, so let me let me formulate this, and then 
I'll tell you. So we, we have the, the natural map going from z to pi 1. Um, OK, so let's assume homology doesn't vanish for all of, for all of what follows so not, not the sphere um, the map given by sending the integer m to so this sits inside the universal cover yeah those loops um, and the map sending sending the integer m to the mth iterate of the rep flow, so and you, you have to you have to put the right constant so that it actually gives you a loop, um, is injective. Okay, so it's a group homomorphism, and here's a copy of Z sitting inside the fundamental group. Okay, so a week ago I talked to uh, Peter Albers, and he told me that basically nothing's known about this. Except maybe some previous cases with, uh, which uh, Strom and I did using using uh, quasimorphism, and then I talked to uh, Dusan McDuff, and she said that that sh it, it should be that she thinks it should be obvious that uh, this is true. So I think the truth lies somewhere in between, but at least let's see let's see a proof. Um, and I mean I, I checked um, I checked with the people to to which uh, she referred them in, in in the paper that they wrote, and uh, they. They don't mention actually anything like this, and so it's known for the sphere um, using some use, using topology actually, so not not contact topology. Um, so here's a proof using contact topology, I mean, it's like a very hard contact topology. Um, so you go to you go to this property, and you see that L plus of this this element is m times h bar and since this this is a function on on this group it distinguishes different elements so you get different elements that's it okay. so if they were the same they, they would get the same value they don't okay um um, another corollary is uh, is about orderability of V. So under this condition again, so there are no uh, positive contractible loops in consider tilde V C. Um, for for a similar reason. So, what does this mean? So, po positive means that you have some element. Yeah. So, a loop. Um, like that. Um, yeah. A, a loop gives you gives you an, a loop in here gives you an element in con zero tilde. And it's going to be positive if you can represent it as the time one map of some Hamiltonian, which is everywhere positive. So that's that's what it means. Now, so you const constantly flow in the positively transverse direction. And um, if that's the case, you can find some number epsilon, which bounds h from below. And then by monotonicity, It's going to be at least epsilon. So it can't be contractible. Yeah, word contractible, it, it will give you the trivial element, the, the identity, and then the spectral network would be zero. And so we see it's positive.
and uh, probably a slightly more interesting theorem is the following for any contact form beta. giving you the same context structure in V. And any contactomorphism in the identity component, um, there is a beta translated point. So, uh, so this, this proves a weak form of uh, Sandon's conjecture. So she conjectures that on any contact, let's we'll say closed, on any contact manifold, if you have such a thing with, let's say, non-degenerate uh, translated points, then there should be as many of them as uh, you know, so critical points of a, of a Morse function. So we, we prove one one translate point, but for any for any such thing. Probably in general you would expect some cup length estimates or something like that, but um, this, is, uh, this, this proof is very crude, and very simple-minded, just relies on the properties. Okay. Okay, so let's see. So what's a, what's a translate point? Let's, let's draw the picture. So we, we have this grape flow. And we have some, some point x, yeah, which gets mapped here, to phi of x, and it's on the same orbit. Conversely, you can think of a point y, whose pre-image by phi is yeah, on, the same, on the same orbit. Um, what does it mean? It means that if I, if I start at y, I flow in the negative direction with the, with the rep flow, and then map by phi, what I get is a discriminant point. Because yeah, it's going to be fixed, and the rep flow obviously preserves beta. Uh, translate point. So this is a translate point. So the contact form is preserved. Therefore, the whole thing preserves the contact form. It's a fixed point, so it's a, it's a discriminant point. OK. so. So phi has a translated point. If and only if there is a positive s such that what happened here? Phi composed with a time minus s rep flow of beta has a discriminant point. OK? And having a discriminant point is independent of the form. And actually, we can detect dis discriminant points using the spectral variant. OK, so let's do that. OK, so let's take a contact Hamiltonian generating phi. And let's consider the following flow, contact flow. OK. So the time, the time one map of this is, is what I want. OK. And um, so. Let me give you the following statement. Um, so I have this, and let's say it generates the element C in the, contact, in the universal cover. OK, so the claim is um, let's call it Psi S. So this thing belongs to uh, it, it, this, 
this thing is a, is, a, is an integer multiple of the of of h bar implies let's say psi s has a discriminant point. Okay. Why is this true? So let's say it does. It means that the corresponding spectral by spectrality, the corresponding spectral invariant um, uh, is is supported on a on a translated point with um, with an integer multiple of with with length yeah with with a corresponding rib length being an integer multiple of uh, of h bar, which means it's just a point, and so which is fixed. Yeah, and since it's translated, the contact form is preserved. Yeah, so we have a multiple of the rib flow going here. And yep. So we will detect a translated point of phi this way. So we only have to produce a positive number s for which this holds. Yeah. OK? But you already have a discriminant point. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying, I'm sa OK, I want to prove that phi has a translate point. Okay. And phi has a translate point if and only if oh. one, one of these guys has a discriminant point. So I want to produce a discriminant point of that. And it will happen if one of these spectral invariants uh, hits this, this set. OK? So let's see that this, that this indeed happens. So I look at this, um, and you can compute the contact Hamiltonian of this. So this thing has contact Hamiltonian, um, alpha contact Hamiltonian, which is what I care about, because yeah, I want to compute the spectral invariant with respect to alpha. So alpha contact Hamiltonian, um, which is h minus S, OK, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. S times the, the conformal factor of H. Um, it should be composed with, uh, composed with something. Maybe not. Times the contact the contact Hamiltonian generating the rib flow of beta. Um, there there may be there may be a, a correction here. Maybe here you have to put the rib flow of uh, this thing. At any rate. What does this mean? So here you have some kind of positive function of, uh, of t and, and a point in v. Okay, So it's a time-dependent function v from 0 to 1, uh, which is positive, therefore, everywhere. So it's bounded away from 0. And h is well, also depends on t, of course. So h is given. Therefore, if you take s large enough, this will uh, this will be less than any any given number, eventually. Okay, so therefore, now I consider this this the, the spectral variant. So the spectral variant of this guy um, I claim that there's a constant c positive constant such that this spectral variant is less than minus, minus c times s. So I can just push it like that as much as I want. And therefore, it's a, okay, it's, it's a continuous function of, of s by continuity. And therefore, it will hit the set infinitely many times. Okay, I, I, I don't know. This, this function need not be monotone or anything like that, but it's bounded above by a monotone function, a strictly de decreasing monotone function. Therefore, 
yeah, there's going to be some s positive such that this spectrum variant hits the set. And the corresponding element, psi s, uh, will have a discriminant point, and therefore a translate point. Okay. Um, Whatever. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> okay, so for all for all s large enough. Uh, so so Mar Margarita conjectures if you take any contact contact manifold, you have translated one contact Yeah. Yeah. Is it known for s to n minus one? I th it's known for the projective space. Okay, but there you have no trivial homology. Yeah, you have natural homology, and you, you can use. But for s to n minus, I mean, we also proved the result for s to n minus one, but lying in R to n, and then of course you can displace it. But as long as the uh, energy is small enough, it can't displace. I think it. I think I think it's unknown. It's unknown for the sphere. Yeah. So, so that would be the one. Mm -hmm. So I think translated point would if you take the contact Hamiltonian in the symplectic, take, take the one homogeneous thing in symplectization, it means you come back to the same energy surface and the yep. core connecting. Yep. So yep. Yep. It yep. So, it's a so that would mean uh, you have this R to N problem where you have a Hamiltonian which is, uh, say, uh, one homogeneous or something like that, or two homogeneous, and uh, you look at the time one map and you want to find an orbit which goes back to the energy satellite on the same map. I think I think it's I think it's completely open. Uh, it's, uh, so the general statement for all contact forms is open, but uh, for a standard contact form, Margarita proved it using generative functions. For the sphere. I mean, then I'm pretty sure. I mean, if if, if it's true, it should be accessible by sort of Mickey Mouse methods. What do you, what? What do, what do you mean? What do you mean by Mickey Mouse yeah, methods? Just, it was a variation of yeah, so so that's that's what uh, Margarita did. Uh, she used yeah, journey functions. Okay. Um, okay. The uh, yeah, this went much much slower than I, than I expected. Um, <laughs> I know, I know, I have to. <laughs> okay, um, so who, okay, okay, let's, let's, let's make a vote. Um, who wants to hear about the construction of this homology versus who wants to hear about quasimorphisms? What about you just say what the definition of Okay. I mean, I okay. don't know that. Uh, you can vote over. <laughs> okay. Was, I propose. <laughs> <laughs> So this is this is actually uh, I mean if, if if you are in the if you are in the business this is going to be a little bit disappointing okay? so this this is this is e e easy um, so we go to uh, we go to the simplectization of V multiply it by m and take <coughs> this form yeah, so the standard simplectization form here minus the form here and this has a natural Lagrangian in it which we call v hat which is just the set of points so for me simplectization is and people are gonna dislike me for this so I like zero to infinity rather than minus to infinity. Zero infinity on the right, not on the left. No, no, no. Just, just not, not, not R. Okay. Um, 
so it's the set of points v1 pi of v, where v is in v. OK, so you take the level r equals to 1 and the projection on m. This is a Lagrangian. This is a Lagrangian. It's monotone. And the minimal Maslow is twice the minimal churn of m, which is at least 4, which is very, very high. Therefore, you can define, uh, well, you can hope to define Lagrangian floor homology for it, which is an algebra, a unital associative for Benius algebra. Um, and uh, the, the catch is that this is, this is not a convex manifold. OK, so you have, to, you have to do something with this. And th that's, that's Peter's job. He was told. <laughs> He's because we're still discussing what you're doing. So <laughs> um, and uh, so the, the, effect, the effect that this has, so in this case, we're, we're pretty sure that you can define it. However, since it's, uh, it's a non-convex manifold, uh, it can vanish. And this 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 exactly what happens with uh, with the sphere. Um, I I don't know if it's because it's non-convex, but at any rate, um, so you just you just define the Lagrangian floor homology of this thing, and then you can do it with Hamiltonian perturbations. And then you take Hamiltonians of the form uh, R times H plus zero. So H is your contact Hamiltonian here. R is the coordinate here. Take zero and M. And you do this Hamiltonian uh, relative to this Lagrangian. And it's Lagrangian floor theory with Hamiltonian perturbations. You have spectral invariance, whatever you want. Okay. Um, I know. OK, so maybe I'll, I'll say one more word. Yeah, so, uh, so this is all fine and dandy. But you also want to compute this thing, right? To be able to use it. Um, and you will also you will also see how uh, what I said in the beginning comes about. <clears throat> so we have uh, we have the following theorem. So there is a long exact sequence of the form quantumology of M, quantumology of M, fluoromology, and nature of M. OK, where so you have a couple of arrows, pull back, push down. OK, um, so here you have quantum multiplication by the, uh, by the Poincare dual of the Euler class. This is the, the analog in homology of taking full pre-image, take a cycle, just saturated. This is the analog in homology of uh, pushing a cycle forward, just composing with pi. Um, this is an algebra map. Um, in particular, it maps the unit of the quantum homology, which is the fundamental class of M, to the, to the unit here, which is the fundamental class of V. And you take M, the full preimage is V. Uh, and this is, a, this is a module map. A module map where I act on both these guys by the quantum homology. OK, so quantum homology, of course, acts on itself. And since this is an algebra map, it also acts here. And this, this intertwines the, the two, two things. OK, so that's a module map. And, um, you can see how, how this implies, yeah, so invertible Euler class, this is an isomorphism, this thing vanishes, and vice versa. Um, I, sh I should say that this is, uh, I, I, I would say this is expected, 
because this is a particular case um, of a construction due to um, uh, Biran uh, Khanevsky. And also Tim Perutz did something uh, something like this. He, he did something more, more general. Um, this because, so you see this, this manifold, SV times M, that sits over M times M. And has a C star bundle. And uh, V hat sits over the diagonal as an S1 bundle. Okay, and and in, this, in this situation, well, forgetting the fact that the manifold upstairs is not co convex, um, this, this, this situation has been considered by Bran Kornievsky and uh, Tim Perutz. And they, they, get the same, they get the same result. Um, okay, I guess I should stop here. Thank you very much.